Sonnets and Songs by Arthur Upson. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Dedication, Introductory Poem and Note. Dedication to Ursula, who chose and arranged this verse, it is inscribed with love. A.U. Summer 1908. Introductory Poem His Lovers to Arthur Upson by Ruth Shepherd Phelps. We see thee in the clear aspiring flame on autumn hearts. The moon and each white star restore us thy deep love-wise smile. Afar, about the world, red roses breathe thy fame in many gardens. Old rich words proclaim thee, music sings thee in each magic bar. And all the rare and lovely things that are Bloom newly now to celebrate thy name. And so this world is fairer than before, With thee in sunset cloud and the blue day. Thou needest not, O perfect, longer stay. But, O, oh, without thee, how to win thy lore. Yet even death for thee hath shed despair. Dark death is beautiful now, thou art there. Introductory Note by Ruth Shepherd Phelps This little group of sonnets and songs chosen from the collected poems of Arthur Upson is almost identical with a selection made at the poet's request a few weeks before the end of his life. It bears the title and the dedication he intended for it. Acknowledgement of their kind permission to reprint these poems is tendered to Mrs. Julia Clayfin Upson, Mr. Edmund D. Brooks, and The Bellman. R.S.P. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. After a Dull Metch Concert by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org Out of the conquered past, unravishable beauty, Hearts that are dew and dust, rebuking the dream of death, Flower of the clay, downcast, triumphant in earth's aroma, Strings that were strained in rust, a-tremble with music's breath, Wine that was spilt in haste, arising in fumes more precious, Garlands that fell forgot, rooting to wondrous bloom youth that would flow to waste pausing in pool green valleys and passion that lasted not surviving the voiceless tomb end of poem this recording is in the public domain the earth errand by arthur upson Read for LibriVox.org This memory-laden star that winds through space her wistful ways, Searching for that she yet not finds in all her yesterdays. She is a troubled thought whose quest, gone forth among the spheres, Shall never know delight nor rest nor respite from her fears but still veer on through void and flame and still expectant yearn till with her prize to whence she came she doth at length return the sun that lends her living light to tell her gilded years the moon that lanterns her at night to search among the spheres the starry hosts that wheel about and watch her mazes wind serve humbly with nor dread nor doubt that she one day will find that she one day will find the prize they sent her forth to earn, and with it through the waiting skies triumphantly return. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vers la vie by Arthur Upson. Read for LibriVox.org. The statue by Victor Rousseau in the Palais des Beaux Arts, Brussels. Angel, hast thou betrayed me? Long ago in the forgotten land of souls that wait, 
thou ledest me to the outward folding gate bidding me live i leaned into the flow of earthward rushing spirits fain to know what are humanity and human fate of which the rumour reached to where we sate in our cool hidden dreamless anti-glow but i learn not and am bewildered here to know why thou with seeming kindly hands didst let me forth explorer of a star where all is strange and very often fear urges retreat to that forgotten land's unthoughtful shores where thou and silence are end of poem this recording is in the public domain phantom life by arthur upson read for LibriVox.org. my days are phantom days each one the shadow of a hope my real life never was begun nor any of my real deeds done i live so quietly i know there must be many a son that does not see me as i go among my shadows to and fro end of poem this recording is in the public domain at the hill's top bides love by arthur upson read for librivox dot org mine is no wayside rose all may attend at the hill's top it grows at the road's end deep in unchidden weeds rose without stain his soul its beauty feeds who can attain he who attains thereto faith must disclose ere he will shake the dew round its repose no pleasant garden slope waiteth for him it is to him whose hope stayeth undim who trusting receives it a faith in the dale his hoping achieves it his toil shall avail end of poem this recording is in the public domain love's patience by arthur upson read for LibriVox.org. i learned to lag behind my life's desire that i impelled not rashly to despair may rather guide still hope to some sweet air of high achievement where with statelier fire nearer the stars my passion may aspire slow-tongued experience teaches me to bear on lips more patient love's impatient prayer with toiling hands to weave my dreams attire yet oh when fragrant evening dims the world what moon flames burn in all the lamps of dew what lonely roses lift their hearts impearled what silence waits the step and voice of you then then all fails my empty arms outstart for one brief hour to strain you to my heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain a motif out of lohengrin by arthur upson read for LibriVox.org. unearthly beauty of soft light persuadeth this castle which to shadows did belong and through its farthest vaults sweet mellow song the silence of my wintry halls upbraideth gently as saffron dawn that smiling fadeth the sable yielding hours these search along and with them souls of roses dead faint throng of odors of old years that all pervadeth lady this thing i speak not do not fear it twere more than friendship yet no better name dares my most grateful heart's allegiance claim lest this as i do think 
be brother spirit to him swan brought to brabant's castled shore who named aloud was lost for evermore end of poem this recording is in the public domain My song must not forsake me by Arthur Upson, read for LibriVox.org. Not mine from thee, loved heart, to feel such tide as this mine own doth pour thee. Still shall I not go all unsatisfied, enough that I adore thee. And if thou never wakest to my song, not weakly shall it falter proudly i pace love's lonely courts along unto their inmost altar ah some day if within thy pleasant sleep faint echoes of me find thee white heart may dreams be not too fair or deep or soothing to unbind thee perchance even then responding to that sound thou'lt hail and overtake me clearing the idle distance at a bound my song must not forsake me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lake by arthur upson read for librivox dot org when in our drifting boat the early lights salute you bending to trail your arm where yellow lilies rise lifting your full white throat to free its morning music then do i dread the charm of your deep and changeful eyes when at the night's young hour the first fair planet rises shaking her petals gold afar in the fields of air when to that flaming flower lonely the dim lake answers then how my heart grows bold wishing that you were there end of poem this recording is in the public domain absence and presence by arthur upson read for LibriVox.org. absence is full of song of you which dies when i once more look down within your eyes i know not why not one least syllable reaches your ears from all i long to tell let it be so for in your silence i perceive you spellbound too and therein read all absent lovely words you ever sigh the selfsame words that fail me in my need end of poem this recording is in the public domain a song of love and your dreams by Arthur Upson, read for LibriVox.org. If life be the street where dreams are sold, faith is the purse of exhaustless gold. Dreams are a many, both false and true, but love's is the home you fetch them to, and there all alone with love you pour the dreams you bought on your chamber floor and when love looks each packet through his smile turns all the false ones true end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mystery of beauty by arthur upson read for librivox dot org one for whom is beauty where no eyes attend as richly goes the day and every dawn reddens along green rivers whereupon none ever gaze think could earth see an end of all the twilight lovers whose thoughts blend with scent of garden blooms they call their own would not as close the yellowest rose outblown be after them 
the unmurmurous evening's friend then wherefore beauty if in mortal eye that loves them stars no challenge read to shine and all the wonder of a sunset sky wax not more wondrous for such smile as thine why pray if not for love which cannot die this old earth loving love of thine and mine two when we too from our summer hills have passed and autumn burns beneath thy praise no more nor any winter's raving at our door shuts one within the other's heart more fast neither spring's roses learn what lips thou hast oh then this thing called beauty to its core our wedded soul shall penetrate before one thought unto eternity is cast then shall we know the violet's pretext learn more definite a promise of the rose and its fulfilment when the maple's turn be part of all the glory among those or help the may with her uncoiling fern and breathe the trillium open where it grows end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Tragic Winds by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org I lay in a rich chamber, candle dim, And night-long dreamt awake. The ancient winds, like remote music, Made a dusk of sound. Vials throbbing out some earth-impassioned hymn From halls of regal revels and bright sins far voices as of love-mad women crowned star-gemmed despairs the queens of legend lands seated within the gateways of their towers eyes full of smiles forgotten unfelt tears uncounted falling in their idle hands which whitely drooped upon their laps like flowers and Taya's sisters these, and Phaedra's fears. Methought their murmurs gathered in the night, and all these wretched queens of ancient care joined faintly their involuntary moan, till pale Aurora passioned toward the light, slight Cynthia fled adown her brightening stair, and day brought other worlds to rule my own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Picture of My Mother as a Girl by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org Did ever a youth pass by the spot Your fragrance, love, made dear Without a heart leap at the lot That drew his fancy near? Was ever a maid of fairy stuff like this in days of old? A rose already fine enough without that heart of gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song of Agamede from The City by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org Grow, grow, thou little tree, His body at the roots of thee, Since last year's loveliness in death The living beauty nourisheth. Bloom, bloom, thou little tree, Thy roots around the heart of me, Thou canst not blow to white and fair From all the sweetness hidden there die die thou little tree and be as all sweet things must be deep where thy petals drift i too would rest the changing seasons through end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sobbing woman by arthur upson Read for LibriVox.org. 
I heard a woman sobbing in the night against a casement high, and as she cried, our heartless world's deliberate homicide, our tragic badinage, our mortal slight of elemental claims, and the dark plight of the poor I faced there, rigid, open-eyed, across the unechoing street in silence died her weary moaning whether in her sight some star appeared to soothe her present pain with memory sweet or quiet sleep strong hand blunted her keen-edged woe or other fear came smothering down too close for sob or tear i could not guess some fate may understand that spins unseen her endless umber skein. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Incurables by Arthur Upson. Read for LibriVox.org. Long up and down I paced the house of pain. On their white thrones reclined the dwellers there, in regal reticence and superb despair. Maimed, marred, half blotted out, as they had lain for expiation under the disdain of life's great grinding car. Repulsive, fair, old, young, loud, gentle, now alike did bear that kingly quiet whereto those attain whom life has conquered and whom death has smitten with the universal light their erstwhile fret forgotten entire beneath the eternal sun they lay and read in air the old laws written of silence and their souls were outward set where young and old and fair and foul are one. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chorus from The City by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org Of old it went forth to you keener pronounced of his sire reluctant impelled by the gods unescapable fire to choose for his doom or to perish at home of disease or be slain of his foes among men where troy surges down to the seas polyides the soothsayer spake it inflamed by the god of his son whom the fates singled out did he brute it abroad and you keener went down to the ships with his armor and men and straightway grown dim on the gulf past the isles he passed never again why weep ye o women of corinth the doom ye have heard is it strange to your ears that ye make it so mournful a word is he who so fair in your eyes to his manhood upgrew alone in his doom of pale death or of mortals the beaten so few o oh, weep not companions and lovers turn back to your joys the defeat was not his which he chose nor the victory troy's him a conqueror beauteous in youth o'er the flood his fleet brought and the swift spear of paris that slew completed the conquest he sought not the falling proclaims the defeat but the place of the fall and the fate that decrees and the god that impels through it all regard not blind mortals divisions of slayer and slain but invisible glories dispense wide over the war-gleaming plain end of poem this recording is in the public domain arlington 
by Arthur Upson. Read for LibriVox.org. No tap of drum nor sound of any horn shall call them now from this unbattled height. No more the picket dreads the traitor knight, nor would the marcher tired delay the morn. Fell some upon the field with victory torn from weakening grasp and some before the fight doomed by slow fevers or the stray shot's spite and some old wounds through quiet years have worn and all are folded now so peacefully within her breast whose glory was their dream from her own sanguine fields from isles extreme from the long tumult of the land and sea where lies the steel potomac's jewelled stream like the surrendered sword of memory end of poem this recording is in the public domain between hingham and braintree by arthur upson read for librivox.org for lcc between Braintree and Hingham, beyond the roaring town, the land shrank into shadow as the sun dropped down. The apple trees were ghostly, the peach trees seemed to bleed as the train rushed on to Hingham with my heart's sore need. Between Braintree and Hingham, the rocks were ashen gray, the creeks were bare of water, and the brown boats lay tipped in the tideless bottoms without a hope to rise and all the world grew blacker neath the low black skies between hingham and braintree as the train leaped on to town the fields were full of sunshine and heaven came down and lay along the waters that brimmed the grassy flume and gleamed among the fruit boughs a burst with bloom between hingham and braintree the rocks were green bedight the hilltops were a wondrous arcadian delight the dories and the catboats danced gaily side by side and the sails were sheeted silver on the full flood tide end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Wheat Elevators by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org Castles or titans' houses Or huge fanes of ancient gods That yet compel men's fear. What powers, what pumps Do these betoken here? looming aloft upon the plough-seamed plains souls of ripe seasons spirits of sweet rains flock hither and the sinewy yellow year heaps their high chambers with pactolian gear more precious than those golden lydian grains nor fortresses nor demigods abodes these are upraised to well-feared deities whose power is iron and whose splendid sway is undisputed now as when great Rhodes and tyre and carthage flourished serving these or joseph stored egyptian corn away end of poem this recording is in the public domain from octaves in an oxford garden by Arthur Upson, read for LibriVox.org. Wadham. The day is like a Sabbath in a swoon, slow in September's blue go fair cloud things, poising a slant upon their charmed wings, arrested by some backward thought of June. Softly I tread, and with repentant shoon, half fearfully in sweet imaginings where broods like courtyards of departed kings the old quadrangle paved with afternoon 
there dwells the very soul of quietness seclusion spirit deep within the green secure from fame as some unsung demean in far ionian hills there waits to bless with her all-healing mother-soft caress the sympathy of trees that friend unseen soother of moods on whom all hearts do lean sooner or later and their cares confess as one whose road winds upward turns his face unto the valleys where he late hath stood leaning upon his staff in peace to brood on many a beauty of the distant place so i in this cool garden pause a space reviewing many things in many a mood accumulating friends in solitude from the assembly of my thoughts and days lost inheritance this is my lost inheritance i look with brotherliest affections yearning forth to the flower-bearing sod oh what is worth the strangest state of flesh i strangely took in the soft soil the garden breezes shook from the wall chink but now there's measure of earth to match my body's dust when its rebirth to sod restores old functions i forsook vicissitude strange that a sod for just a thrill or two should ever be seduced into the round of change wherein its present state is found in this my form forsake its quiet true and fruitfullest retirement to go through the heat the strain the languor and the wound forget soft rain to hear the stormier sound exchange for burning tears its peaceful dew old song and a river it was the lip of murmuring thames along when new lights sought the woods all strangely fair such quiet lights as saints transfigured wear in minster windows crept the woods among and far as from some hazy hill yet strong methought an upland shepherd piped it there rousing a silvern echo in her lair sweet thames run softly till i end my song my spencer lay the dewy grass upon his pages shone before me as i read like the gold daisies gleaming round his bed his lantern verses upward to me shone and never yet his song's rich note hath known sweet thames ran softly by his burthen sped and shall while hymns are sung and prayers are said low chanting his glad prothalamion st paul's one time from that gray close i did emerge where through i had been toiling and to me like some benignant rock above the sea st paul's great brow above the mist and surge loomed kindly and methought did kindly urge all men up to it till there came to be a hush on hearts a deep tranquillity of healing virtue round the minster's verge roman glassware preserved in the ashmolean fair crystal cups are dug from earth's old crust shattered but lovely for at price of all their shameful exile from the banquet hall they have been bargaining beauties from the dust so dig my life but deep enough you must find broken friendships round its inner wall which once my careless hand let slip and fall brave with faint memories rich in rainbow rust life's usurpation tell them sweet evening breeze poised here no less i love their memory whom thou goest to greet out there at heaven's gate but that i meet less oft the idle thoughts of old distress tell them the thought of them still lives to bless 
But since I learned how much, despite defeat, My life demands that I shall make complete, I must yield up my cherished loneliness. Traces Something of sorrow am I not denied, Share of the earth's old universal pain I own, Though but as hillsides own the rain, or solid sands the long waves stroking side still though no rains upon the steep may bide and harmlessly the sea floods rise and wane the downward torrent traces do remain and sands bear record of the sedulous tide he is no lover of the sea who loses sound of her voices in land wandering still should her old melodious mystery spring around him wend he wheresoe'er he chooses and so within me rhythmic life refuses by any other pulse than yours to swing far from your friendship's ocean though i sing where the hills tire and the rough pathway bruises end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Minstrels in Bloomsbury by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org To Covent Garden people stream To drink the music there. Upon the curb we stay to dream With melody more rare sing on enchanted minstrel girl thou artless young and fair the buses in southampton row the jingling hansoms here bear london heedless to and fro in search of evening cheer for us thou art enough dear voice forgetful sweet and clear our day-long toil but goes to win another toilsome day play on oblivious violin soft harp beseech thee play and thou pale girl with eyes aflame sing on for us who stay end of poem this recording is in the public domain thought of stevenson by arthur upson Read for LibriVox.org High and alone I stood on Calton Hill Above the scene that was so dear to him Whose exile dreams of it made exile dim October wooed the folded valleys Till in mist they blurred Even as our eyes upfill Under a too sweet memory Spires did swim And gables rust red on the grey sea's brim but on these heights the air was soft and still yet not all still an alien breeze will turn here as from bournes in aromatic seas as round old shrines a new freed soul might yearn with incense of rich earthly reveries vanish the isles mist exile searching pain but the brave soul is free, is home again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. After reading The Golden Treasury in the Green Park by Arthur Upson Read for LibriVox.org Off Piccadilly with its pavement cries its maddening monotone of wheel and hoof in the green park primeval summer lies how near how yearning yet how far aloof o oh, city symbol of a world that's still heedless of beauty under heaven rolls and thou blithe meadow all with larks athrill like poetry that pasture of great souls ye twain so sundered shall forever dwell a tumult and a blessing side by side 
here as to toil-worn argo once befell a singing island on a thundering tide where men might stretch them out in glad release we too much wandering hail this hour of peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the lower rhine by arthur upson read for LibriVox.org. dusseldorf heine's birthplace by dusseldorf the singing rhine stream bends age wanted from his earlier lyric tone a master singer somewhat pensive grown in more of epic stateliness he wends where youth in memory only still attends with foregone passions raptures long since flown so sweeps he down from minster crowned cologne and to the silent level sea descends not such o heine thy mad stream of song though now beyond our fitful ocean's hem the eternal tide of beauty harbor thee thou fleddest the broken crags of life along beating white flowers of foam out over them and passionately soughtest thy mother sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain souvenance de liege by arthur upson read for LibriVox.org. november gray city by the silver muse i fling one precious day to thee of my brief days take it and give remembrance mellow praise of chimes across a moonlit evening rain of light echoes the full wavy swing of burdened barges down thy waterways noise nearest music the blue holy haze and perfume of old altars wing on wing of iridescent doves descending soft within a gothic gate where one strews bread for alms to the air's beggars beyond her arcades recessive pinnacles aloft november's vista deepening to one blur of blue and gray behind her upturned head end of poem this recording is in the public domain after reading an old comedy by arthur upson read for librivox .org. For H A B. I close the book, thee in it, gentle mime, in undisturbed seclusion, hid away twixt dulled Moroccos, where shall none gain say thine obvious humor of a simpler time. So an old grandsire's chimney corner rhyme, secure in smiles of those who love him, may never on cold, unkindred hearing play but live alway its crisp and mirthful prime there waits bold pleasant wit all undismayed unconscious of this devious age of ours forever alien to our sighs and tears and there the sweep of fair antique brocade the undying perfume of forgotten flowers and laughter ringing faintly from old years End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. After reading An Italian Garden by Arthur Upson, read for LibriVox.org. For R. To him no more an inward hate shall speak, nor aught but beauty sing who walks within this garden late and hears the fountain murmuring a vestige of some other day once lived but dim remembered now goes in the moon's familiar way beneath the stately ilex bough the parterre i but half forget 
the Tuscan melancholy night. Too faintly I regain them, yet too keenly to have lost them quite. Was I the other of some song that many a year hath left the lips of her who walks alone along the water where the triton dips? And she, how her respetti claim the sad bewildered heart of me that ever almost saith her name, yet loseth it continually slow moving down the marble stair or leaned on sculptured balustrade her face is shadowed by her hair her arms are buried in its shade oh would she lift that face or free those hidden hands i know that soon my faint old faded italy again might blossom to the moon End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chorus from the City by Arthur Upson. Read for LibriVox.org. Aegina's foam is high and wild, where Pan immortal sits enisled. But thou and I, with flying oar, seek cytalia's sacred shore the city of the violet crown well knows that rocky islands frown but thou and i together learned what fires upon her altars burned oh many a sail goes gleaming there bound for some olive garden fair but thou and i made fast to her and found her cyprus lovelier the shrines of aphrodite lift their smoke in every village rift but thou and i remote from man propitiate the woodland pan end of poem this recording is in the public domain golden rod by arthur upson read for librivox dot org doubtless twas here we walked but yesterday seeing not any beauty save the green of meadows or where slipped the brook between a ribbon of blue and silver yet the way is strange in golden paths i seem astray do you remember comrade to have seen aught forward in these meadows that should mean a culmination in such fair display we noticed not the humble stalks amid the many roadside grasses but it seems they were preparing this and when their dreams were ripe for doing they could no more be hid than golden thoughts that bloom to action when their hearts make heroes out of common men End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In October by Arthur Upson. Read for LibriVox.org. The maples their old sumptuous hues resume around the woodland pool's bright glass and strong the ears blue incense and recession song sweep over me their music and perfume dear earth that i reproach thee in my gloom i would forget as thou forgot'st i long to make redress for such a filial wrong and praise thee now for all thy ruddy bloom so fond a mother to be used so ill yet this poor heart of mine hath ever been prey to its own unwarranted alarms shall fret and beg forgiveness so until thou fold my thankless body warmly in and draw me back into thy loving arms end of poem this recording is in the public domain
when rose leaves fall by arthur upson read for LibriVox.org. when rose leaves fall in evenings cold to mingle with their mother mould look to it lest thy heart be set to seek strange blossoms and forget thy roses and their sway of old run not to lesser blooms nor fold unto thy heart the creed those hold who stand like stoics by and let their rose leaves fall but gather them as precious gold rich spiced high placed and orient bold they shall be summer to thee yet what though they fade and thou regret thou canst make theirs a boon untold when rose leaves fall End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Springtide of the Soul by Arthur Upson. Read for LibriVox.org. For R.B. The flesh to fragrant whitening of a bough, full flooding fields and softening sod doth yearn the spirit will to autumn's wooing burn and to october is her tenderest vow october springtide of the soul what now may i compare to raptures that return when round thine auburn hair these eyes discern first the wild purple berries kiss thy brow my soul bends to thee as a waiting bride long from her maiden chamber searching far doth see at last beneath the vesper star her sunset lover toward her castle ride she flings her evening casement open wide and leans out through the trembling lattice bar then turning sets her chamber door ajar and flies back to the crimsoning window side submit thyself to beauty cry the lords of this autumnal pageant day and skies that dwell in calm like love remembered eyes and the dim dusk of topaz golden hordes streaking the forest like old painted words fading along some saint's page fair and wise and windy rivers whose mingled voices rise to smite rich vibrant melancholy chords friend of my heart among the autumn trees we walk together bearing thought to thought of this vast symbol earth wherein lie wrought hints of immortal dreams and destinies and you and i are part of all of these ourselves mysterious emblems tones half caught from voices far wherein our souls have sought deep meanings silent mid earth's melodies end of poem this recording is in the public domain ex libris by arthur upson read for librivox dot org in an old book at even as I read fast fading words adown my shadowy page, I crossed a tale of how, in other age, at Arqua, with his books around him, sped the word to Petrarch, and with noble head bowed gently o'er his volume, that sweet sage to silence paid his willing seniorage, and they who found him whispered, He is dead thus timely from old comradeships would i to silence also rise let there be night stillness and only these staid watchers by and no light shine save my low study light lest of his kind intent some human cry interpret not the messenger aright End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When the Song is Done by Arthur Upson 
Read for LibriVox.org. When the song is done and his heart is ashes, never praise the singer whom you silent heard. What to him the sound, what your eyes fond flashes, when the singing's over, say no word. Ye who darkling stood, think your noon of praises, can it glimmer down to his deep-set bower? Never round him shone, once your garden mazes, now his wanderings over, bring no flower. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Sonnets and Songs by Arthur Upson.